Hello everyone, welcome to the Joking Dolphin Gaming Pod. I'm Mark and as always I'm joined by Matthew. Hello. And Nathan. Hello everyone. How are we doing chaps? Not far bad. Can he complain? He's, he's turned from Newcastle. <laughs> can, can he complain? Okay. Why Why I, man? Yeah. Is that what they say over there? I you know so. more than me, Matt. Is that how they talk? All I care about at the moment is we're winning 4-1. So. 4-1? It was 3-1 last time I looked. That's it. Put our foot down now. We won the tile. <laughs> Let's not talk about football results. Yeah, yeah. specifically. <laughs> Should we want some news then? All right, go on then. Go on, so kick us off. Something exciting. Well, I'll quickly, quickly go over this, um, seeing as I did mention it last time. Well, last time it was leaked. This time it's confirmed because they kind of got strong-armed into it. So, uh, <laughs> Activision has confirmed the next Call of Duty game is Modern Warfare 3. And we do have a release date, if I have a look. Uh, they, they threw in a release date with a, with a little teaser trailer with that as well. It's coming out as it normally comes out around uh, 10th of November. Oh, I was close. I said first week of November. I was close. You're pretty close, yeah. You're pretty close. So they had a little teaser trailer um, where you kind of got a few snippets of um, voiceovers by Captain Price. Um, and then I think we got a very few lines uh, from the main antagonist, which is going to be Makarov, um, who, if you've played Call of Duty before, you'll know from the original Modern Warfare 3 as well. So, I mean, over that, there's been quite a few snippets that have come out um, about the game. So it was initially uh, reported that this was going to be potentially an expansion to Modern Warfare 2 originally um, from Bloomberg. And then Activision were like, actually, no, we want all the monies. So that's about right. Uh, yeah. So this is going to be like, I suppose, a full fledged um, game. Uh, it is being made by Sledgehammer Games with the help of about 20 of a different studio. <laughs> because everyone as, under as Activision the, works on Call of Duty now. Yeah, anyway, pretty as much we know. now. So, from the looks of it, at least multiplayer-wise, everything kind of from Modern Warfare 2 is getting pulled through into Modern Warfare 3. So the like operators, bundles that you've bought, weapons that you've unlocked, all that kind of stuff is actually getting transferred over, strangely That's enough. very un-Activision. yeah. Um, you mean you don't have to purchase think, it all again? Well, I think that's what that's what takes um, cadence in the light. I think people thought this was going to be just an expansion pack. I think it's giving like potential like confirmation of rumors about it. It looks as though we're going to get a lot of the uh, original Modern Warfare Two maps in Modern Warfare Three remake, whatever they would call. It. It's a bit confusing. We're going to get a lot of that apparently. Um, some of the other kind of potential rumor slash leaks for this game as well is that they're bringing red dots back to the minimap, um, which yeah. Goody what are red made. dots? When you fire your gun, yeah. So yeah. yeah, when when you fire your gun, you would appear on the minimap as a red dot, which gives like obviously the enemy team like kind of uh, you reveal your location. In fact, yeah. if people are keeping around the minimap, unless you've got a silencer, in which then you don't appear on the minimap when you're shooting your gun. They removed that from Modern Warfare 2. Um, and I think also the re- the remake of Modern Warfare as well, they kind of, Infinity Ward kind of just removed it and were like, right, you need to stop focusing your eyes on there and start actually like listening out for My eyes are sounds and whatnot. Yeah, you should be focusing on guns and stuff. Um, a couple of things that I think, I suppose pro players and then regular players of Call of Duty would be happy that seems to be coming back. Uh, we've got the reload cancel, whatever that is. I think there's there's like a mechanic where you could reload, but then you cancel it, but then it like acts as like a quick reload sort of thing, so you don't go through the whole animation. Um, slide cancelling as well. That seems to be a big thing in Warzone, or the original Warzone, um, whatever that is. They're going to make the ninja perk, which is where it um, quiet your footsteps. To bring that back as an actual perk rather than a, um, I forgot the call, equipment, I think is what they used it in like the Modern Warfare games. They're changing perks now to be gear. So perks are going to be like equipable gear on your person rather than just being like a thing, I suppose, wherever perks used to be. 
I don't know, they're, they're changing stuff around and kind of that. Um, I think I mentioned last time, it looks as though they're going to bring the war mode back, which I'm massively happy about, provided that it's like, God sticks to what it is. You know, I don't want any kill streaks. It's all about the gunplay and teamwork. Oh no, it's just going to be vibrations galore. And building bridges. <laughs> um, <laughs> one other thing which is quite intriguing, I just think, is something that Treyarch side might be working on, is that they might be bringing back the Outbreak Zombies mode from Cold War, which, okay. Might be. So they'll be the rumours again. Yeah. Well, it's the rumours, exactly, but... I mean, if they do, I think that's actually going to be the first time a Zombies mode's come to Modern Warfare, which, okay, interesting. Sure, you'll be happy about that, Matt. Love zombies. I mean, I'll be ecstatic if it, if it does, especially if it's the Outbreak version, because that was like, um, they were like mini war zones, like massive maps you had objectives to do in it, and then once you complete them, you move on to like the next like big map and stuff, so that'd be cool. But yeah, they've, uh, they've confirmed it, so we'll I suppose we'll wait to see that. I think the official reveal trailer is coming out very, very soon, like I think sometime next week from the recording of this podcast. So when it comes out, probably in a very few days. So we'll see. Cool. Right. Do you want some more good news, Mark? Sure. Why not? You Give me love... good news. Well, actually, is it going to be good news? Because it's EA Sports. Well, there's, there's a lot related. riding on this now. Oh, right. A big deal up now. So I may as well just come out and say it. Yep. Right, Crossplay well, is coming to pro clubs or just clubs is what it's now going to be called. I'll just confirm what I've read about it in terms okay. of like the platforms that are going to be cross-play. So we're going to have PS5, Xbox Series X, S and PC versions can cross-play with each other. PS4 and Xbox One versions can cross-play with each other separately. So no Mormon Pirates. Sorry about that. And then all on its own, the Nintendo Switch can cross-play with nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I wouldn't be surprised if it Wack, wack, Pro clubs probably wouldn't come to Switch. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'm just surprised that the Switch version's got a frostbite now, so that's enough. But can we switch the PC version off? Don't want to. Probably don't not. Wanna, don't want to <laughs> play with them lot. Why not? They might be rubbish. Come on. It's going to be like full hackers, isn't it? Yeah. Full hackers. As soon as the game comes out, we'll be playing against like full teams of 10, all like level red 99. <laughs> got the speed boost on like permanently. Oh, it'll be hilarious when we beat him. I don't, I don't need that anxiety in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be good. At least we'll be able to get games and whatnot. Mm. I guess we'll cut matches. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it'll certainly extend the life of um, clubs, certainly. I think maybe they might treat it as like a proper mode now. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Uh, yeah. yeah. As the thing, says, though, so. you talk about cups, they need to just do more of them and always have a cup open. Because I am si- I don't want to look and wait 54 days for a cup to open. I think that's the reason why they do it, though, isn't it? To funnel everyone to that cup and have a, a short, a small window for it. Open. Yeah. I, I think that's the it, idea. It used to be where you actually got a choice of, like, what cup you wanted to do. But I think then, then like, that, like, split the, I suppose, player base. Like, not everyone's going to be in each cup so i think just having certain ones available on a schedule is uh, is better plus i mean they're, they're doing this whole what um monthly league series now aren't they Where... yeah because you're gonna have to go into a playoff aren't you to get promotion from leagues Stuff like that yeah but i don't know what that's gonna be like i don't know how it's gonna be but we'll see i, suppose. I mean i thought overcooks with pressure never mind going into a playoff <laughs> yeah what gets made under pressure? Diamonds, Nathan. You can be diamond. True. Now I'm just a lump of coal. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Fair okay. enough. A, di- a diamond will not get made. The coal will crumble. We'll see, though. Well, sticking with um, EAFC24, uh, they did a bit of a deep dive recently on their ultimate team mode that's going to make kajillions, as it always is. Um, so, I mean, there's some, there's some new stuff, which... Actually, I just think could be quite interesting. So we might have spoke about this before, I can't remember, but they are bringing the female professional players into Ultimate Team now for the first time. 
Um, so you'll have a mix of uh, male and female professional footballers in your team if you want. They even showed off, and uh, this got a bit of, uh, this is quite funny, it's got a bit of uh, tension, should we say, on social media. Uh, they showed off like the team of like mixed pros, and you had um, up front in the 442, you had Erlen Harland, who was like red 90, and then you had, I think it's Sam, is it Gurr? I could be saying the last name wrong. Kerr. Kerr, that's it. Sam Kerr was rated 91. <laughs> so she's technically a better, a better footballer than Erlen Holland, and that got a lot of discussion. She may well be. But yeah, like, I've got no problem with it. I'll, I'll have them both up front. I'm, sp- I'm sure they'll smash some goals together. Um, it was just fine. Uh, it reminds that, me of that um, like cartoon that were on um, Ray Jetix back in the day called Galactic Football. Oh yeah. Did you ever did you ever watch it? I don't think I did. Basically no. it was these like aliens playing football against each other, but they were like an Earth team and it had like men and women on it. They were quite good. Well, I mean you mentioned Alien and we've got Harlan there, so that, that probably fits together. Yeah, he's um, just a freak. He's got two goals already. <laughs> hey, so is Isaac and he plays for Newcastle, so I'm happy. Anyway. Um yeah, so there's uh, five leagues that, again, incorporate from the women's side. We've got the Barclays Women's Super League, the D1 Arkema. I've probably absolutely butchered that. We've got the Google Pixel Freuen Bundesliga. Um, that was a mouthful. Uh, we've got the uh, Liga F from Spain. And then we've got the National Women's Soccer League from the United States. So we've got five there. They've incorporated something new as well. They've got which is called Ultimate Team Evolutions. So what you can do now is every player card that you've got has certain objectives you need to reach. And if you get them, you can essentially evolve their card so they get better. How this is going to add into like all the other like team of the weeks, team of the seasons, breakthrough, you know, Champions League, Cards the guard. I don't know how that's going to get incorporated. But yeah, there'll just be millions I mean, for every player, cool. won't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's so good that you can forms of players. Yeah, because you can like pick your favorite player and then build on mm. them, can't you? So I just did, cool. did mention as well. If you do evolve a player, you cannot trade them. I might have the wrong. You might be able to trade them. You can't sell them. Sorry. Same thing, I suppose. So if you do evolve a player, you could then that's it. That's like you'll have to like, I suppose, discard them. Probably, um, if you don't want them anymore. That sounds rubbish. Um, might make you not want to evolve them if you want to get any money back. Potentially, yeah. Uh, they've also got the position modifier consumable. So that was where you could change a player's position. Um, so, like, maybe you want, I don't know, maybe you want Erlen Harland to play Cam instead of forward. You could, like, put on a CF to CAM card on. Um, they've got room completely. Apparently, players will now have multiple positions that they can play. So you can put them basically where you want them to play. And, like, that's it, really. Which I think is good. I think it's, that's, that's a good, positive thing. Um, I think that was it. There was some as well that, like, obviously introducing the women. You can have them link up with, like, their almost, like, male counterparts. So say, like, you had um, Sam Kerr up front, and then you've got, like, I don't know, Try and think of a Chelsea midfielder that would play behind them because they both play for Chelsea. They like chemistry, you'll like match up. So you can do that kind of stuff as well, which is pretty cool. But yeah, just, uh, just some updates for the next Ultimate team that I'll most likely not put money into this time. <laughs> he says. Because he buys the Ultimate Edition. <laughs> I've not bought the Ultimate Edition for two years now, so shh. <laughs> Should I talk about Rockstar Games? Those chaps. Ooh, is it GTA 6 news? No, not this time. Oh, damn it. So, they announced that they're releasing a Switch and PS4 port of Red Dead Redemption. No PC, because F those, apparently. <laughs> it seems to be a thing when it comes to Red I Dead. Know, it feels <laughs> you know? a bit harsh for PC people. Aren't they? <laughs> um, it's got no multiplayer either, and this is not a remaster or a remake it's just a port and it releases digitally on August the 17th and physically will be available on October the 13th and it will sell for $50 whatever that equivalent is in British pounds about 45 quid 
Yeah, so it'll be 50 five. quid for us. Yep. Um, but it will include Undead Nightmare, but that doesn't really justify oh, the pricing. Good. And when queried about the price, because um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody asked the CEO of Take Two about this uh, price, and it's, his name is Strauss Zelnick, and he simply said this. That's just what we believe is the commercially accurate price for it. Do we believe that for a port of a game that you can actually buy the Xbox version physically for thirty dollars and just bung it in your Series X and play? So off the back of that was the follow-up question: Do you believe what you're actually saying? <laughs> I don't know. It just I've, seems I've very heard about this as well because, like, it's it's just the port. Like, there's no like. Any enhancement whatsoever, like nope. you can get on the Xbox Series X, like you can get like the, what is it, the boost patch up to 60 frames per second or something like yep, that. Yeah, you can, yep. Like, not even that. And uh, the port's not even been done by Rockstar, it's been done, it's been outsourced to a developer team called Double Eleven Studios. Remember when they did the GTA trilogy, and that got outsourced, and we know how that went. Mm. Hey, that were really good. I got pushed into an invisible building and got stuck for minutes. Nice. Tried to jet back out of there, but I couldn't. So I well, had to blow myself up with a rocket launcher. But now you can find yourself inside an invisible horse, maybe. <laughs> rockstar be rockstar. Yeah, they're making some like strange decisions lately, haven't they? Because the thing is, I think there was there's much rumours about there's going to be a remaster of this, and for this yeah. to be the outcome is shocking, to be honest. I mean, not maybe even, not there's still a remaster on 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 the way. Perhaps. No, why would you? Why would you release this? No money. <laughs> this is it, I'm afraid. This is. I it. think they're this trying to troll really everybody. It. I think this is like the thing that's well, going to make people angry, them. and then afterwards they'll be like, "Jokes is the remaster." Nah, I don't, I don't think they're smart enough for that. To be honest. No. It used to be. <laughs> Times have changed, I'm afraid. They've looked on social media and like, yeah, let's give people the opposite of what they want. <laughs> well, you have all the monies of ten years of GTA Online. We don't bother putting any effort into it, it seems. I yeah. really it's it's so strange that they've like excluded PC from this. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's... the one market that's like been dying to play the original. Um... Yeah, because the yeah, because the originally it wasn't on PC, was it? No. You think, just... Oh, this is this is your chance. Yeah, it's like, just nope. three sixteen PS3, wasn't it? So it's like, nope, you can't do it. Should we talk about the Devolver Delayed? Yeah. Go the on, greatest then. showcase ever. <laughs> It yeah. was hilarious. I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking, oh, oh, I'll sit down for about an hour, just see what this is. No, this this was a three-minute presentation. Yeah, I did the same. Like, I, I sat down <laughs> to watch it um, yesterday. I'm like, right, let's book some time over because this is going to take a while. Looked at it, two minutes and 59 seconds. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'd love it if any showcases were that length, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it was quite funny, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so they've all had the showcase announcing the games of theirs that have been delayed to next year. So the delayed games are oh, the Plucky Squire. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to that one. Yeah, it looks that, all like, right. 2D to 3D art book kind of story. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think all the games that were delayed, I quite like the look of. Um, stick it to the man. No, sorry, stick it to the stick man. Stick man, yeah. Yeah, stick it to the stick man. That looks good. Yeah. I like the quip that they put in saying, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards. Uh, skate story? It's about... Uh, is it a glass, like a skateboarder made of glass and is skating around hell or something like that, I think. Or the underworld, yeah. something like that. Quite it did look style. cool, yeah. Yeah. The anger foot. It's about a bloke raging and I think it's a bit like Hotline Miami. Is it? Well, first person though. Are you just like booting your way through doors and kicking people? And uh, This last one though, I, did, I, I don't know anything about this. Pepper Grinder. I don't know anything about that one. Yeah, that was a strange one. I, I, to be honest, that one totally kind of went out of my radar. Like, yeah. Okay. Because I've heard of all the other ones, but I've never heard of that one. Hmm. I don't know. But well, then they announced the um, not delayed list that's still yes. coming in 2023. So we had uh, Gunbrella, um, Wizard with a Gun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Best name ever. Uh, the Talos Principle 2. I'm looking forward to playing that because that were a really decent puzzle game. Likes that. I've still got that on my backlog. Won't play mm. The Cosmic Wheel six, Sisterhood. Um, Very catchy. Yeah, definitely. Rolls off the tongue. What's this one? Car- Karamazoo? I think, I think that's right. Yeah. 
And then uh, Bro Force Forever was the last one. So still lots to come from Devolver. But I just, th- throughout that entire, in air quote, showcase, <laughs> I just love the energy that the, yeah. like, the, the hosts had. It was, it was just really funny. If you've not watched it, I'd, even if you don't care about the games, I'd just watch it. Yeah, uh, it, sounds, it sounded more excited about the ones being delayed than oh, yeah, definitely. what was still going at. Yeah. yeah. Gotta love no, those good. guys. Oh, you, you convinced me to watch it now. It won't take too much of your time, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, this next bit of news. It's fairly close to my heart because I recently had a an issue with one of my controllers, but for PlayStation. Because it was over a year since I bought it, they literally would not do anything for me in terms of fixing it, which is annoying. But Xbox have now decided to launch a series of repair parts for their controllers. I mean, it's not going to help me for my PlayStation ones, but hopefully it'll help somebody with their Xbox you ones. You try and bodge it together, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, take <laughs> the um, PCBA board and whack it into the, yeah. the dual sense. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, so what uh, Xbox have done is they've put parts together that you can use to fix your Xbox controllers. So this is for the Elite 2 controllers and for the Xbox Series X and S controllers. So you can buy button sets. So if like a button's broken or it's not working, you can buy like all the triggers, buttons and everything. Um, I've only got the price in dollars here. So you can buy all the buttons for $21.99. If something's happened to like the face plate, so the main kind of face of the controller, that's $19.99. Um, And then if you do need, so this is good if you've got Drift, for example. So you can buy a full replacement PCBA board, and that's kind of got all of the um, haptics and rumble and two sets of like analogs. So you can just kind of whack that in, put your controller back together, off you go. Now, this does seem quite expensive, and it seems to me like you could probably get a controller for the same price. But this one's fifty nine ninety nine. But saying that, if you've spent two hundred or so on a on an elite controller, then it's probably good value to fix that. And along with all these parts, they've actually put guides together, you know, to assist you with fixing your controllers. So it's really putting the onus on the user to kind of say, right, we've got these tools for you. You can go off and fix it. Which personally, I'd rather have access to rather than being left like in the dark about doing stuff like this, because I've had controls with Drift where I've had to buy a third party kind of analog, solder it in myself. So I've had to buy the equipment to have to solder everything. And it's just a hassle. So I think this is a really good step in the right direction. And I think other companies should follow suit. I think you should have a workman who comes around to your house. Just fix it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just a personal work. Like dressed in like first party outfit so for yes. xbox master chief comes around and fixes your <laughs> controller kratos comes around for sony if they ever did that and then mario comes around to fix it for, Ni- for nintendo what are you here the toilet these are fixed <laughs> yep oh wouldn't trust mario doing that no if you've seen the film no don't trust exactly it all. yeah that'd be hilarious speaking of nintendo according to video games chronicle Developer kits for the new Nintendo Switch successor have made it to studios. And according to their sources, there are some details about the console that have been revealed. So it's expected that the release will be during the second half of 2024. And again, we'll have a portable mode, which I don't think is of any surprise. But apparently we'll have an LCD screen. Okay. And we'll revert back from the OLED. That's, that's quite oh, puzzling. Good. good. If that's good. Oh, it's a, it's a, yeah, sorry. I, I, I mean, understood that wrong. I was th- there are good and bad things with that because OLED screens, they are, they do tend to get screen burn. Mm. So if you're playing like games with like similar kind of looks to them a lot, then it can like burn into your screen and cause issues. With LCD, you don't have that. But OLED is a lot nicer. The blacks are a lot darker. So swings and roundabouts. It's, uh, it's believed that's been done to bring costs down. Mm. But is Nintendo lacking money? I don't know. Well, it's probably the cost that they're passing on to us. Well, consumers. yeah, that's probably, that's probably the thing, isn't it? It will accept physical cartridges, which is good to hear. It's not an old digital affair. 
but there's no clear indication of backwards compatibility. But I suspect it probably will. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a big mistake if it if they yeah. didn't. But that's about it, really. That's all. That's all we. Well, I say no. We don't know it. No, true. But apparently, but apparently, that's what they've heard. I wonder how powerful it would be. Like, will it be the reported? Will it 4K. only go as far as like being like the 4K, and then that's it? Or I think that's another reason for the OLED, uh, for the LCD screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's for because the parts inside it will be more expensive. Because obviously, I think they're going to have to upgrade memory and that kind of thing. Just as we know, games oh, are getting massively. bigger and bigger. Like, I mean, what the it's only got is it 128 gigabyte the base switch model and the OLED one, I think. The OLED 64, I think, and 32 gig for the base. Oh, is it even smaller yeah, than I even than thought? That. Okay. No, yeah, you've probably got a point. Like, it needs to be at least 512, or even like a terabyte, maybe. Something in compar- comparison to Steam Deck. Yeah. Yeah. They'd, yeah, they definitely do need at least 4K, and it needs to have a lot more horsepower to go forward with. Because that's one thing for Nintendo. Obviously, the first part is fantastic, but third part is absolutely terrible. Ooh, I, I think it's a bit harsh. It, it depends on what the game is, really. Well, I can't think of a decent third party that's not running on the cloud. Uh, Minecraft? <laughs> oh, yeah, the game from 2011. Hey, you just said third party. Like, you know, I'm just going to prove you wrong. Yeah, but I didn't mean from like two generations ago. <laughs> well, Something you current. Not... <laughs> All right, I'll give you that one, Matt. Let's move. What do you mean, triple A? Yeah, yeah. Like a Call of Duty, for example. Can't think of any AAA that's on. <laughs> I don't need AAA. The selling perfectly fine, is it? I mean, obviously, yeah, it's doing fine. I think how much has the Switch sold? 150 million units. Yeah, I think that's fine. Isn't it? Yeah, just not just, too shabby, just, is it? Just fine. It's okay. It's not. It's Could be more. Numbers. Could be 250 million if they made it a yeah. beast. Rookie numbers. Rookie numbers there. Right, well, I'm going to have to bring the mood down a little bit, I'm, I'm afraid. What, Steve? What? <laughs> true, yeah. To be fair, I'm normally oh like God. the optimism guy. That's true. Group. Um, so, cool. well, well, we'll start off with, like, initial good news, and then it kind of goes downhill from there. So, um, we had EVO uh, quite recently. So, EVO is the fine game tournament, the big fine game tournament. And there's quite a few announcements there and stuff, but one that caught... Uh, caught the eye and then also caught some negativity surrounding that uh, was the one for Street Fighter 6. So they announced that they were doing a collaboration um, with Nickelodeon of all companies because there's a recent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film that's come out. Yeah. Um, it's on. If you've not watched it, you've got to watch it. So you think, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, they announced uh, four four costumes for the four turtles. Uh, you got some little like, accessories and uh, emotes that you can get from that as well. And that's like, I, I think that's probably already gone live over the game now at the moment. But could you guess how much just one turtle costume would set you back? Right, I'm going to be wild here and say twenty quid. Cheap right, steer. I'm going I'm, I'm to. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna preference this as in dollars. I've not actually got it in pounds, but we'll 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 say that equates to twenty dollars. Um, no, you're a bit off there. We got a little bit less. Although if it was twenty, then I think the whole twit would melt down. Fifteen. About... Yes, around around fifteen. So technically, what I actually cost you is seven hundred and fifty fighting coins. What were the currency is in Street Fighter 6. But you can only get so many in, in, incrementals. So you can get like 610 for about $12. And then for $5, you can get about 250 That's so actually, sneaky, that. probably That's like Fortnite slide, that is. It'd be about $17, really, that you spent. Um, and that's just for one costume. So... Um, yeah, didn't didn't really go down very well. Um, so hang on. So what what's what's the costume actually for? Because he's not you're not a fighter, are you? 
No, so it, I've not seen it properly. Uh, maybe at least it's not from this article. They're not specified which fighter would have the costume of the turtle. There's just there's definitely yeah, so like you're not you're not getting the turtle. You're getting no. You're getting like a the skin cost, yeah, on, in effect a, on something. Yeah, a skin of that your fire could wear, I suppose. <laughs> Madness. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a bit nuts. I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know who to blame at this point. Is it was it Nickelodeon's idea? Was it was it Capcom's? Um, I don't know whose idea it is, but. Obviously, just and said, how much money can we make out of this? Basically. Games, in it? Um, for clarification, I've just sent a dog costume in from Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles for $9.99. Bargain. If I ever had a dog, yeah. I'd buy that. Oh, I've got one. I might get one now, actually. Give me that order. You, talk about, you can talk about other stuff. I'm getting all of this. Which turtle is it? What's the red one? Donatello. Raphael. 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 Yeah, it's that Come one. On, you went to see the film the other day. You don't yeah, know the difference. Yeah, I don't know who they are. <sighs> What's the, the purple one, one? The blue one. That's Donatello. You, you're Do- hurting yeah, Mark Donatello. <laughs> right, the, Donatello's my favourite one. Okay. Purple one. So yeah. you came to that conclusion. Yeah, I did. did it, you didn't know who you I identified with. I didn't know before, with. but now I do. Because <laughs> Donatello did. likes anime, and he came out with some really funny... Um, like pop culture references. So, right. Well, <laughs> moving swiftly, we had a direct, didn't we, Nathan? We Did a, we? A new direct. Yes. I thought we had a present. Oh well, yeah, that thing. <laughs> <sighs> Talk about it before I get angry. We had a Pokemon presents on the eighth of August, twenty twenty-three. What time? I don't know what time. Oh, I'm disappointed. Because I did not watch it live. (laughs) But it opened up with information about the Pokemon World Championships that's happening in Yokohama in Japan. So this is the first Pokemon World Championship to be featured in Japan. Like, which is quite weird because I thought, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that they would have had it before. The very first one would be in Japan. Yeah. So. They talked about and showed off what the winner's going to get, which just looks like a load of cool Pokemon merch. Um, anyone that gets to go will have slightly poorer merch bundles. Um, <laughs> From Wish. Yeah. <laughs> From Wish. Um, it's like Temu nowadays. Yeah, Temu. That's the new Wish. Temu, that's the one. So there's going to be a Lapras promo card that you'll get. And there'll be a new Pikachu plush that you can purchase. And it's Pikachu eating a bowl of ramen, which is pretty cool. And it's Naruto's favourite snack. So I liked that. I had ramen last week. It was very nice. Did you? Carry on. What flavour? It was beef. Beef something or other. Where did you have it? Vagamama? Yes. Other Asian restaurants are available. Yeah. Like number one Chinese (laughs) takeaway. It's not there anymore, is it? What? Number one Chinese takeaway. Oh, yeah, it went ages ago. I can remember buffet, we, we we went into town um, probably about 13 years ago to go to that restaurant. Ooh, and that the doors were locked and there was yeah. dust everywhere. And we we're like, yeah, <laughs> this is close now. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Yes. Oh, oh cool. World Champions. Good times. Maybe me hungry now. So they're going to be setting up a load of stuff around the city uh, of Yokohama. So there'll be loads of photo ops. Um, they'll be decorating buildings with Pokemon, uh, which look quite cool. So, like, you can compare your size to a nursery ring, for example. If you don't know what a nursery ring is, it's like a giant bear Pokemon. Um, so they'll be generally within the city celebrating. There, there'll also be a luxury cruise ship that you can go on to Ooh, that will cool. be docked. Um, and on there, um, you can trade Pokemon cards, trade Pokemon with your Pokemon games. So it's going to be like a hub where Pokemon players can go and just relax and do what they want to do. So, yeah, it sounds pretty cool. I, I think it would have been cool if like, they held the championships on the cruise. Like, they just go out and just like, have it in like, the middle of anywhere. Middle of the ocean. And if you lose, it, you get thrown overboard. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> or if there's anything like the SSN that was in the anime, then there's, that's not going to go down well. It kind of yeah, sank. that's true. Um, yeah. anyway, as it goes over Mockford. Yep. So off the back of that, they announced that there was going to be a new Pokemon short series. Um, so mm. it's going to be called Pokemon Path to the Peak. And this is based on the um, trading card game. So it's an anime based on the trading card game oh. Pokemon. Oh, nice. So it's set in a school. Um, so you we follow this girl as she joins a new school. And then off the when she joins the school, she joins this tra- a Pokemon trading card club. And then basically battles with her friend Oddish. And it seems like there's a bully antagonist. Oddish is a Pokemon. It looks like a little sprout with like leaves coming out of its head. If you don't know what Oddish is. And the first episode... I don't like, I don't like sprouts. So I don't like sprouts. No, oh, no. And the first episode is out now. So if you want to watch it, you can. After that, we got some more information about Detective Pikachu Returns. So the coffee-loving gruff Pikachu. Now I'm listening. Yes. Um, so, oh, Matt's just put Oddish in the chat so you can see what he looks like. It's actually, it's not That's a not sprout. sprout. It's more like a blueberry with yeah. leaves, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I must be thinking of the shiny version. So. Yeah, the shiny one's like light green. So, yeah. Getting mixed up because I've got so many of them. Anyway. <laughs> so, te- Detective Pikachu returns. So, Pikachu tells us about himself. Obviously, loves coffee. Solving mysteries with his friend Tim um, and him trying to find his old partner um, off the back of what happened in the first game. Um, introduces us to a few people around the town and basically the mechanics of the game. So, how you play with Tim to speak to the humans, um, Pikachu can speak to the Pokemon, and then between yourselves, you find evidence. And then once you've got all the evidence points together, you can start putting a picture together to solve the mystery which is quite cool. And we also got a release date. So but it's going to be October the 6th, stacked. Just more oh games, my. more games coming. Uh, no, stop. Push it back. Put it into December at least. It's not Devolver. They're not going to push it back. <laughs> no, there's too many. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, that's happening. I can't wait to play it. I'm, I'm probably about halfway through the first game on the first 3DS, one. and I'm enjoying it. So I need can't to. Wait um, I need to get it. I'm, did I did I get mixed up? I was. I thought I read somewhere they were actually going to bring the first one to Switch, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. I think that might have been a rumor, you know, before they announced this one. Oh, okay, yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe this is what it is then. Perhaps. I mean, they could yeah. potentially put it on, you know, as like a download only one on the eShop. That'd be good. I mean, that'd be pretty difficult, wouldn't it, to saying that will the... play a 3DS game on a Switch, wouldn't you? Mm. Good point. Nah, it's, it's fine. I'll I'll see if I can find it cheap somewhere and get it. Yeah, I think I paid about twenty-two quid for it, so it's not that expensive. Oh, that's expensive. Yeah. Right. Anyway, more Pokemon stuff. So, yep. we got a trailer for the new Pokemon Horizon series. We did not get a release date for that though. That's coming soon. So this is the series that comes after the end of Asher's journey, which yep, I'm not going to lie, I cried at the episode because we've gone on the journey with him for the best part of yeah, it is over two decades, so yeah, yeah emotional time. So, mm. but yeah, that's happening. Right. So skip that. On to my favourite one, Pokemon Go. So it's Go Fest time. So Pokemon Go. It is coming to, well, Go Fest is coming to London, Osaka, and New York for the first time. So, in these locations, you can have like Pokemon Go events um, and you can download tickets um, that normally cost between like five and 15 pounds. So, quite a bit of money. And it's over kind of a two to three day period and you can catch Pokemon um, with your friends, do raids. And it's just like um, a celebration of Pokemon Go and getting everyone together. Now, they did mention that this was the seventh anniversary, which just sounds absolutely insane to me that it came out seven years ago. It just does not feel like it, and life it is going too wow. fast. <laughs> so um, there, there are a couple of things that are going to happen off the back of that. 
So in this event, Diancy will appear for the first time with the ability to Mega Evolve. So that's a new Pokemon that we can catch. Also, there's going to be Mega Rayquaza, and you'll also be able to do raids against him. Now, one of the shinies that I absolutely crave is Shiny Rayquaza. So if I can do this event and get one, I'm going to be ecstatic. So we'll see. I probably won't get one. Lisa has got oh, one. Oh, no, you won't. And she holds it over me forever. So I've already t- told her, like, if she dies, I'm trading that off her account and keeping it for myself. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Jeez. Wow. I, I don't think I don't think you'd be playing Pokemon Go that far. Well, you never know. She could get run over tomorrow. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Actually, tomorrow's a birthday. She can't get run over tomorrow. No. She can't get ever get run over. No, I say no. <laughs> You've, you've said it. Don't. Where is this going? Right, anyway. <laughs> I want the Rayquaza, that's what I'm saying. Right, okay. Right. Believe I'll get, I'll that you'll get, get it. Back into it. Yeah, like proper the rapper, you've just got to exactly. believe. Exactly, yeah. Right. So, Rayquaza raids. So, this is going to start in September. And also what's happening is we're going to get Gen 9 Pokemon in Pokemon Go. So, that's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for you mainline players out there. For people who don't know what Gen 9 means, it's just the latest iteration of Pokemon that they've added to the roster. So, yeah. That's it. Pokemon Go's finally caught. That's it. And then they'll drip those shinies to us eventually. So these next few bits, to be honest, I didn't really get too much out of them because I I don't play these games. So this might be great for you guys, but it's not for me. So I'm going to skip them. I mean, certainly, certainly for my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all in for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we we had some Pokemon Masters EX news. Um, we had some Pokemon Cafe Remix news and Pokemon Sleep, which came out last month. So, yeah, I'd, I've not really played any of them games. So after those, um, we got an announcement of a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet animated web series called Pokemon Paldean Winds. Um, so that's going to be streaming officially on the Pokemon YouTube channel from the 6th of September. Now, when they first showed us the trailer for this, I, I really liked the hand-drawn artwork of the Paldean region. I thought they were really nice. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I think I'll give this a watch. Or at least I'll watch the first episode when it comes out. Um, but yeah. yeah, I always seem to find their the web series is actually quite quite good. Like, I watched the the Generations one they did. It was like I think it was a it was based around the anniversary of Pokemon, I think it was. Was that uh, when you like a, you kind of went on Red's journey through No, so it, it kind of um each episode was like a, a focus on that generation. So like I think like the first episode was like Generation One. It did like um it showed you like the battle between Red and Giovanni, I think. And yeah. then you went through like the seventh episode was like based on gold and silver. The episode was um, Ruby Sapphire. For, for, like, as you go on, um, you should watch them. Is they are they are pretty good, and there's they're obviously the other ones that they've done as well. So cool. Sorry, I will hijack a little bit because there was a bit that you didn't like that I actually um, liked that they announced they made the announcement for the Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Um, so uh, they're bringing the Pokemon trading card game um, to the Game Boy. I forgot what they call it. Uh, the <laughs> Game Boy Switch Online kind of. Yeah, that kind of yeah. stuff. The oh yeah, I didn't games. have that highlighted. That's why I skipped it because that was in between um, Cafe Remix and Sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so they're bringing that game, uh, and then also if you've got the um, expansion pack for. Nintendo Switch Online. You've got obviously all the N64 games. They're bringing Pokemon Stadium 2 um, there as well. And both from are available now. Yeah. Oh, that's so, good. So that means you don't need the physical version anymore, Matt. Oh, no, no. Yeah, no. Apparently, I don't need the physical version. Yeah, keep, keep going. <laughs> Name a price and we'll see. We'll see. We'll negotiate off, off pod. So, um, off the back of the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet animated series. Um, there's going to be uh, an event. So the show does a bit of a cutscene uh, with Mewtwo and Mew fighting. Mew gets absolutely slapped, 
and then they announced the event. And the event's going to be called Get Mew and Mew 2, which is very imaginative. <laughs> so, what you can do, you can, in Pokemon Sky- Skylet, <laughs> in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, <laughs> them together. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, you can add Mew to your team and then challenge Mewtwo in what's called a terror raid. So um, you can now go and into the mystery gift menu, and if you put in get your Mew in uppercase, then you'll be able to get a Mew on your team. But the terror type will be different, so you might have a different Mew with a different terror type to your friend, so that'll make it interesting because you don't know what you're going to get. So once you've got Mew um, you, and you've got Mew in your team, then if you fight Mewtwo in one of these special terror event raids, then apparently something great is going to happen. So I imagine it's going to be a cutscene or something's going to happen between the two and a long battle against each other. Um, but that's going to be that's going to begin on the 1st of September. So not too far away for that if you want to play it. At the very least, if you do want a Mew in your game, you can pick that up and then forget about the Mewtwo stuff. I'll at least do that. I'll give it a go. If I eventually get back into the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. you. I think you only got about an hour or two in, didn't you? And then it kind of dropped off. Yeah, just but like everything else. <laughs> at least you get the joy of playing it. Because I've completed it now, the main game. So at least you, at no, least you yeah, play true. it and enjoy it. In, I can get a new into my team early so I can slap some of the gym <laughs> leaders for me. So Now, Easy. you're going to be like Ash and Charizard. It's just not going to listen to you. It'll be too strong. No, he wouldn't do that. Of course he would. Mew's an unru- unruly thing. It's anyway. cute, leave it alone. It's cute, to be fair. I'll give you that one. So the last bit was them going over um, the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Um, so the hidden treasure of Area Zero. Um, so they went over the two sets of DLC. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even want to talk about this bit. <laughs> Why? Because I don't agree with it. You do, what, you, you don't, don't agree, agree with the... With DLC being paid for when they're given us a broken game and not but fixed it yet. Fixed. What? How do, you not, how do you know it's not fixed? Well, I've not played it since it's been fixed, but it weren't fixed for me when I played it, so there. Well... <laughs> no, still not fixed. It caused me a lot of heartache. Yeah, I'm not Quite sure. Quite well, we should, we should cancel... Right. Phantom Liberty, then, seeing as, you know, a lot of people played it when it was broken. Whoa, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, we're doing No, come on. No, we've got to follow the principles that Nathan's just laid out. <laughs> hey, we've each got our own principles. Anyway, they outlined what the DLC is going to be. Uh, we got a release date for the first set of DLC, the Teal Mask, and that's going to be out on the 13th of September. Ooh, stacked. <laughs> stacked. Hmm. I think they uh, they showed off a couple couple of new Pokemon that's going to be in here, aren't they? They did. Mew three. No, well that's no. that's a hope no. for the next generation, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> they showed off that um, Diplin Pokemon. I think that was that was the new one, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, that is Applin's new evolution. So basically, like a how, how can I best describe it? It's like a worm within an apple is what Applin is, in effect. And then Diplin is, I think, kind of like, they just dip the apple in like a, I'm assuming like a toffee. Well, they, in the showcase, they said it looked like a candy apple. So, if oh, okay. you, I can't, if you, if, toffee if, if, apple. Yeah, toffee apple, if you're in the it's UK. Toffee, yeah. yeah. So, so if a toffee um, apple had eyes and could fire stuff at people or Pokemon, then that's what it would be. Yeah, because I think it's, it's already got like two of a evolutions as well. I, I might be mistaken, but they're all like apple based. I think one turns into like like a dragon with like the apple as its body. Yeah. And then the other one's just like this. I want to say it was like an, almost like an apple pie. I think it was. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's. it's I could it's be very weird. wrong. It's, it's an unusual Pokemon. <laughs> when, when I first saw it, I thought it was like a little red pepper, but. No, apparently they go with Apple, so... we got another one as well. we got an evolution for uh, Dura London. London? Dura London. 
which is now called Archer London. It's a bit of a strange one. It's a steel dragon type where it initially just looks like like a skyscraper it turned sentient. Yeah. Um, was that the one that was in a gym battle in um, Sh- Sword and Shield and it gigantamaxed? And turned into pretty much a big skyscraper. Is it that one? Probably, probably one. Yeah, yeah. It's got a, a Gigantamax type, um, but now it's got an actual like evolution, um, which it looks like it's got. It looks like it's, like it's got the Eiffel Towers for hands and arms. Honestly, Fair it's enough. it's it's very strangely designed. But then that's that's popcorn now. <laughs> I mean, there's over a thousand of them, so they've, they're they just putting anything together at this point. True. No, true. Uh, we're also seeing that we've now got uh, Paradox forms for two legendary Pokemon. So we've got Cobra Lion, um, which has the future Paradox look, so it just looks like a, a mech version of itself, in effect. Um, and then the strangest one is... Ra- is it Raikou? Raikou? Oh, yeah. Um, so initially, this is like a I don't know if it's been confirmed if it's maybe like to be like a dog or a cat. It's like a essentially like it's like a thunder lion. Um, oh, it's but now the legendary dog from Johto. Yeah. 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 Um, but now they've turned this into like a thunder bronchiosaurus. Is is that where the Horizon Zero Dawn meme came from? For it. Maybe it does that? look it does look like one of the um... tall necks. Tall necks. Uh, if, if I can find <laughs> find you in the image, uh, it's it's a bit daunting, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Here we go. I've got it. Let me let me show you. You'll both laugh. That's the paradox form. It's called Raging Bolt. Yeah, that's tall look. It's a tall. So, <laughs> inspired by. <laughs> inspired. Yeah, inspired by. I think the Cobra line. Uh, its name, if I can. Ah, uh, but it's potentially going to be called Iron Musketeer. Basically, like all the future forms have like a iron something in front of it. All oh, right. Which is a bit, it's a bit disappointing. But it's like all the um, prehistoric paradox forms all seem to have quite unique names. But anyway, that's uh, that's that's what they showed off. So, uh, Bungie, I made an announcement. They've announced the new voice actor, Commander Zavala. In the Destiny series, following obviously the sad passing of Lance Reddick. Oh yeah. So actor Keith David will now resume the role, and he's got film credits including Armageddon, Platoon, and The Thing, and many others as well. He's got a very prolific career, but he's no stranger to video game voice acting either. So he's previously appeared in the Fallout series, Mass Effect, yeah, mm. Saints Row. Oh, with Julius, weren't he? Mm, yep. I think in Saints Row, yeah, he was. Uh, oh. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. The original one, and uh, Halo two and three, when it was the Arbiter. Mm. So yeah, oh, it was him. Bungie. Yeah. Oh, cool. So a sound passing over the torch, I think, from someone who was pretty much irreplaceable. But no. Yeah. That's that's something. That's good. Shall we finish with something cool? All right. Okay. So to celebrate the tenth anniversary of the game Papers Please, Lucas Pope has released a LCD version of the game. That you can play it on the website. Nice. It's basically an LCD D make of the game. The of a game that's probably not exactly graphics heavy to begin with, but it's very silly. Like, how would it... But basically on the website, it's just basically got like a like a game of watch. It's just got two buttons. You just set approve or deny, and basically you just have to compare their faces with their passport photos and where they say that their names and where they're from. That's all you have to worry about. It's pretty good. I was on it for about 10, 15 minutes yesterday, playing it. Oh, good. good. Which which website is that on again? Uh, if you just get to the purpose, I, I did put a, I, I did send a link in the uh, the chat that we have, but then you immediately sent a TikTok afterwards. So, oh, right, that's where it went. <laughs> oh, right, so you, it just got lost. <laughs> but yes. So if you just so go to the Papers, Please website, you'll find it. I think I'm on the awesome. right one. Papersplease.se. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll give that a go at some point. And that's it for the news. Shall we move on to what we currently play? Yes, let's do yes, it. Yes, we shall. Or should we do what we're currently watching? Or yeah, what go we on did then. watch. 
Well, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, I'm not watching did. right now. Watch but... before. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we went to see the Gran Turismo film. Hmm. He did. Thoughts? I mean, for me, it was a solid four out of five. I really enjoyed it. Wow, it's pretty high praise. Okay, any reason for that? Um, Jerry Halliwell was in, was in it. Yeah. I was like, is that her? And then I looked at the cast afterwards. I'm like, oh, yeah. It just seems a bit random, if you ask me. Yeah, it did. Yeah, yeah, weird. But speaking of actors, I thought um, David Harbour was fantastic. Yeah, I, I, think I, he's, I, I think he's good in everything, really. Yeah. He's just one of those. I mean, there was the recent Hellboy. Yeah, but does that mean he's bad? Or is he just the best of the bad point? Yeah. <laughs> you, you could put that down to, I suppose, Ryan and the story, not necessarily. <laughs> Yeah, it but has to be the best things in some the things is in, I think. Yeah, I re- I really enjoyed the story of it though, just kind of like mm. the rags to riches story. Obviously, when this film was first announced, they said, "Oh, there's going to be a Gran Turismo film." I'm like, hey, what? Hey, what? Yeah, like how can how you make a film? How would you out make a film of Gran Turismo? <laughs> what? You know, there's no story, yeah. no characters, or all like that. But no, it's it's based off a it's 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 a real thing that just yeah, happens to involve like a true Yeah. So the story of Jan was it Jan Moldenborough. Moldenborough? Close enough. <laughs> um, it's not like Jan we watched it the other day. There we go. No? No. Jan Mardenborough. Thank you. He was a Welsh kid, I believe. Yeah. Mm. He won a, a the, the competition to the GT Academy. Where he beat yes. 90,000 com- other competitors, I think. And then he became a real racing driver. It's quite extraordinary, really. Hmm. But I have to say, um, I, I I took issues with some of the film. If I'm honest, I thought Ooh. it was I thought it was basic storytelling, to be honest. And I questioned how real some of it was. They seem to be. What do you mean real? Yeah, it's a film. I, I could I could well. <laughs> All I say is that I tried to look up details of this afterwards, and I couldn't really find like his race results. And I thought ah, I thought right. some I thought some of his race results were a bit convenient. Hmm. <laughs> Film, but it might have been true, I don't know, but I couldn't find specifics. But it just seemed to be every race result just seemed to be just on the edge, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, because it got to that bit when he was in the academy, it was like just about to drop out, and then he did well enough to stay in because of that technicality that he found about the car. The the, the rush job to to get into that academy virtual race, yeah. I doubt he was there with seconds working in like the train yard and then had to run to get to the race. Yeah. I sense there might be some artificial drama there. But it's a film. That's the thing about films, is it? You know, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Yeah, that's it. They've got to make it seem a lot more fantastic. And when he actually did get into the circuit, is he kind of got better and better through that sequence of races? Yeah, he certainly has become a successful driver. There's no doubt about that. So it is extraordinary. But I, th- I thought the first half I wasn't liking, I'll be honest. I thought it was extremely basic. It seemed a bit too cliche ridden for my liking. It's like, it seems like a story we've seen a thousand times in other films. But I think the second half, I think it got better. Yeah. I, I like yeah, the I times that they spliced in the, um, like the Gran Turismo aspects of it. Like yeah, the like gameplay the... and then yeah. the designing yeah. of the game and Some like how realistic was. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Orlando Bloom. That 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 was bad acting. <laughs> Sorry to say. I thought he was terrible. Really? Yeah. I thought he was really I thought he was fairly charismatic. No. <laughs> um no, I thought he was poor. I think he phoned it in. I like the the kid who played Jan. Who yeah. Good. He seemed fairly likable. Forgive, forgive me, I don't know his name. Uh, Archie something, I think it was. Of course, David Arbour, as we said. Held it together, I think. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, their relationship kind of... Because initially, David Harbour or Jack Salter really didn't like him. Didn't like any yeah. of like what <laughs> they were doing. The only reason he was working um, with Danny Moore was to try and kind of say F you to the um, company he used to work for because he was sick of it. 
getting treated like crap by these kids, basically, at Kappa. Mm, so yeah. he thought, let's try this. That was another cliche, having that other bad dude for that team. Yeah, you got to have someone to go against, haven't you? Yeah. yeah that old adversary. I think I'll have it. I mean, yeah, otherwise, like, what's, what's the film really going to be about? <laughs> well, that was my point. It just seemed like the first half was just full of these cliche stuff. And then we actually got into some proper drama in the second half. Yeah. That felt a bit more real. Yeah. I like I liked the whole um I suppose uh relationship that um David's character and um Yen had where yeah. it was kind of like, you know, he used to be a fam- you know, he used to be um a promising racing driver in America. Um he did the Le Mans and then like the whole reason he kind of quit was because he he ended up sort of crashing didn't he and uh he didn't really sort of overcome that i suppose mental barrier when it what comes with a crash because yeah. i imagine i i thought they they what would you call it like the portrayal of you know of a driver going through a crash like what would be going through their mind kind of afterwards you know they'd be like down yeah. themselves can they do it can they not do it can they like you know and stuff I thought that was handled quite well um, yeah. through sort of Archie's perspective of like, you know, he, he started becoming jaded. He, he didn't really want to talk to any of his family. He felt like it was, you know, his fault and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was that was handled quite well. That did improve in that because I'm a big fan of the director, Neil Blomkamp. I really like his other films. He did yeah, District he's 9, the, yeah. uh, Chappie, uh, Alicia. All yeah. films I really like. So I was kind of hoping this would be good. Based off of that, I thought, well, because when I initially hear about it, I thought, oh, this is going to be a pile of rubbish in it. But then I heard he yeah. was doing it. I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe he might be able to do something quite interesting with it. And I'm glad he, half it, he managed to do. Yeah, I, I didn't mind it, the first part of it too much. I mean, they, they had to, like, set up, like, a bit of, ri- a bit of a rivalry between the uh, that American kid and yeah the British lad. Jen, I should say. So um, it was a little like cliche about it, but what else could could they have really done? Like the film did what I thought it would um, with the story that it was building. So there were there was at times as well when they were doing like the racing parts. There were there were times where I was trying to catch right. Is this of the film it real or could could they have like gone like a special camera through the game somehow and it's like they've done stuff. I think for the most part, I I think it was real. I don't think too much of yeah, it. Yeah, I think it was, it was like real. the game and to, like the, there was parts that was like, all right, it's obviously they filmed this part from the game, or they've like taken like the in-game engine and done parts of it. You know, especially like when they're like deconstructing the car around Jen. It's like yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, it was good. I think the the best thing that the film did for me is actually tempt me to like actually buy Gran Turismo 7. I think that's the whole gig, isn't it? I think <laughs> it's yeah, why it's probably it's <laughs> Please I mean, okay. Well, it did it much better than Chard, let's, let's put it that way. So. Well, yeah. yeah. So, I think for now, I think it's PlayStation Studios' best film out of the two. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. I'm not, I'm not I was just thinking, that. is there any I'm more? Gonna, but, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> Um, I think it's it's a good video game film. It's definitely not one of the bad ones. To be fair, at least it's, I think it, at least it's a film that if you're not into video games, it's probably one you still get on board with. Yeah, because like if you yeah. like cars or just d- basic storytelling, really, you don't need to know the game, do you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no. it's just like there's small connections here and there. So, what one thing I didn't like about it was one of the pe- one of the guys that were on uh, Yan's team still giving him digs after he'd kind of proved himself a bit? Like what, saying the that... Oh, bloke? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> four off, you old person. <laughs> Didn't like... I, 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 love, I love how they had to add in, like, the little, like, gamer talking as well, where, like, I think he'd... Um, I forgot which race it was, like, he failed in it. But, he, like, he basically, like, laughed at him and then called him a noob. Like, oh, yeah. come on, yeah. no one no one uses that word anymore. Jesus. Okay, every now and again, the, like, for, for the lights, they kept using the, the infamous sound of Gran Turismo. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can't make the sound, obviously, but there's a, there's a very distinct sound of Grand Turismo games in there. Yeah. On the menus. So that was nice. But no, I think I think we could say it wasn't terrible. Yeah. You could put that on the poster. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. I, I, I quite like... Well, I say I quite like this. I, I, I liked what I did with the credits, where they were showing a bit of like the behind the scenes of kind of like, this is how we sort of made the game, how we like recording... The engine sounds and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't I, I that like a bloke when they stood in front of us. I was literally about to get to that. Like literally, the guy <laughs> yeah. just stood right in front. I like, I'd, it's like I don't know if you were like, you were probably seeing what I was like trying to do next to me. I'm there like trying like imaginary kind of kicking down the stairs, <laughs> like get out of the way. I want to see I did, this. I did bit. feel like just shouting at him. Like what are you doing? Idiot. The film's not. Over. <laughs> Idiot. But anyway. No, there you go. I don't know whether we've encouraged you to go and see it. Go do it. Why not? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. If you like video games, and obviously if you like Gran Turismo, then there's lots of kind of Easter eggs in there for you. Or you like cars. Yeah. Or you like Spice Girls. Yeah. Spice Girl. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. Should we move to what I'm actually currently playing there? Yeah. Try to kick us off, Nate. Yeah, go on then. I'm be sure but sweet. So again, I'm sure you've been on tenterhooks wanting to know what's happened with the joking dolphin yes. FIFA career mode. Right. Relegation. Not relegation. Promotion. Hey. Oh, so we're in Premier League now. Of course we are. <laughs> so we got promoted from the championship as champions. That's it. Of course. It was fantastic. You should have been at the party, like champagne flying everywhere. We are Premier League, all it's that like stuff. like Gran Turismo, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's it's it. Like champagne everywhere. <laughs> like winning the Le Mans. Yeah. We won the Europa League from the championship, so we've got European silverware in addition. Ooh. But I, I did mention that we'd, on our way to some of the FA Cup finals, we claimed a couple of scalps, mainly Liverpool, Mm-hmm. And that seemed to come back to bite us in the League Cup final because Liverpool beat us in the League Cup final, so we could not capture that silverware. But in the FA Cup, we managed to get revenge nice. because we beat Liverpool and retained the FA Cup. So Ooh, that was fantastic. Nice. So it's all going well in, in Team Joke in Dolphin. We've uh, got up to the Premier League. We've made some shrewd acquisitions. And um, yeah, ready to take on the big guns. Can we can we shift this form over to poor clubs now? <laughs> Why do so I well? hope so. We, uh... we need to do something. But one thing I don't like about this um, career is currently Sheffield Wednesday are lang- languishing in League One, um, which is not great. And um, Mark United have got relegated to Championship, and that's where they oh. are at the minute. So yeah, well, art imitating life. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. And um, yeah, New- Newcastle is still a mid-table team, Matt. So yeah, don't worry. No, I'm in this. <laughs> but yes, that's the latest Joking Dolphin FIFA update. So who's who's the, uh, who'd you say the star player is for the team? Oh, for us? Yeah. Um, We've got a winger called Doku. He's 83 rated and he is pacey as hell. He's fantastic. Honestly, he just cuts in. He's, he's like a good Ben Arthur, if I had to liken him to somebody. So I, I really enjoy playing with him. He's he's good. He's probably a star player. Yeah, definitely. So. All right. Right, so the next game that I've been playing, I've been playing a bit more Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, but I've had a bit of a mishap that I'll get to shortly. So Mishap? Yeah. So I've been doing some more shrines. Um, so I've done another five of those and I managed to get enough kind of orbs together so that I could try and um, you can either when you get four orbs, you can choose to try and get more health or more stamina. Now, off the back of what Matt told me is that you're going to need stamina to get the master sword. I've, I'm like pumping my stamina up at the minute, but I've still only got four hearts. So I might have to try and kind of dictate some more to that because I was walking around and then a storm brewed 
and I got took out by a lightning bolt, so I died due oh, to that. Dear. So that wasn't great. So I did some exploring within the game, and I managed to get to a village called um, Kakariko Village. Um, like a really nice place. There's some like ruins surrounding it. There's um, trees everywhere. The people are lovely. There's some shops um, that I managed to go and buy some armor. And the armor is so blooming expensive. It's like 5,000 rupees for every single bit of armor. So I had to sell like some of the, the meat and stuff that I had to even afford one thing. So, but yeah, anyway. Um, so I end up doing a bit of a side quest. So there was this old lady and there was nothing in her shop. And her helpers had been like taken away to go and kind of do something else. And inadvertently, I've managed to get to like the top of this mountain, kill these little creatures, and then uh, helpers managed to go back to it because the helpers had been hired to try and take out these creatures. So I managed to take them out. The helpers weren't needed anymore. And then the old lady got a shop full of merchandise so she could keep on going. So I helped all, an old lady, so that was nice. So I did my bit for, well, I, I must say humanity, for um for Hyrule <laughs> so that was good um and I managed to to get myself to this shrine and um I got to a point where I was trying to go over this kind of chasm and I got to the point where I knew what I needed to do but I needed a glider and I was like my glider's not coming out what's going on so I tried to look online to find out how I deploy my glider and only to realise I did not have the glider because I didn't follow the path that the game sets out for you. Because when you jump off that massive sky temple, um, it points you in a certain direction. And I thought to myself, I don't want to go in that direction because I'm not ready to fight Ganon. Little four heart link is not going to do anything. So I thought I'll go off, train up and then come back. But turns out, you actually need to go to the point that it's trying to push you towards. I thought I was being a bit too clever, but in reality, um, I wasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> right now I'm trying to get to the point, the marker on the map, yeah. um, to try and get the glider so I can actually go back to that um, that shrine and actually do it. So just realise you you've gone pretty far without any like fast travel unlocked yet either. Well, I can fast travel to the shrines I've completed. Well, no, yeah, yeah, you can do you can do the shrines, um, but there'll there'll be some like towers you'll you'll help unlock uh, eventually. You've probably already seen them about. I've got one. I've well, I, I climbed to the top of one and then mm-hmm. committed suicide by jumping off because I couldn't find another way down. Uh, <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah. so you just let. I, us, suppo- us, I suppose us, that's us what the way. glider's for. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's not a sausage creature, though. <laughs> yeah, jump into the pile of <laughs> hay. Into hay bales. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where I am. So I'm on my journey to get my glider so I can actually <laughs> play the game. And honestly, Nintendo, I promise, fair, fair the next situation of Zelda, I'm not going to go off the beaten track. <laughs> I'm going to follow what you tell me to do and then and then go off the beaten track afterwards. So. But yeah, I'm having fun with it so far. I've come across like a few settlements on my journeys around. I've got a couple of horses, which is good. So it makes traveling a lot faster. Um, I've took out a few camps, got some decent loot. So yeah, it's going going fairly well with that glider. But again, I'll get that and then uh, go from there. And I've been playing one more game, but I don't want to talk about it just yet. So I'm going to keep that one in reserve for next time. So. Ooh. What have you been playing, Mark? Mm, okay, so I'm just going to talk about one thing that we play, and uh, we play it with my brother, and we, we've been playing it on and off for many months now, but we finally completed it, and that is Aliens Fire Team Elite. Uh, it sounds that. familiar. <laughs> yeah, so basically it's a squad-based third-person shooter, and you play a colonial marine aboard the UAS Endeavour, and in response to a distress call you and your fellow team of marines are dropped into the heart of like alien territory and you, to find out what's happened. And then you go through these various ships and bases uh, fighting off large hordes of xenobuffs with heavy weaponry. 
And the ultimate goal is to infiltrate the hive and to destroy it. So he plays a team of three. So you can play single player and you'll have two AI assistants. Mm-hmm. Or you can have three players online co-op. Yeah, it could be same. one for us, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But I played this with my brother, so it was two humans and an AI. I have to say, it's one of the few games where an AI buddy isn't completely useless. They're actually quite a beast. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> well. And like, if you were downed, they were like straight there helping you up. So that's good. It does a pretty good job of replicating, you know, like the feel of the aliens. Well, the aliens film. Because mm-hmm. that's more action orientated. And um, it is somewhat let down by the lack of animation uh, when you're talking to someone in the ship. Because you're on the ship, you're like, it's like up between the missions. And you have to go and talk to, you know, the commanders and all that. And they debrief, they give you briefings and debriefings and that kind of thing. And it's just, they, they just stood there just like looking around. And then there's just a wall of text and a voiceover. It's like, it's just a bit lazy. I could have animated yeah. the talking to you. Or something like that. But there you go. There's a thing in the game where they give you challenge cards. So these are things, so you can earn and buy these challenge cards. And they affect your playthrough as you're going through the mission. Mm. For better or worse. So in each mission you could play one of these cards. And it will only last for that mission. And then once that mission's finished, it discards that card. You can't use it again. So you have good ones, like, you know, your weapon can hold double the, uh, double the amount of ammo. Uh, you've got a 30% mm. health increase, you know. A team of synthetic AIs will assist you throughout the mission, that kind of thing. These are the ones that are just interesting. So there's like, um, you can play with like a sepia or black-white filter, just to give it a bit of a nostalgic look, if you want to do that. And then you get some bad ones, which is like, weapon. your weapon will recoil in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's another one which is uh, you can only use your sidearms so you just got a pistol your way through sure which is it sounds like cool. the uh, skulls that they used to do on halo like you know, to make it more yeah. difficult mm. and then you've got um there's, there's one where you're constantly losing two percent of health but every time you kill an enemy you get 0.5 percent health back oh thanks for that <laughs> it's like there'll be a lot of enemies to kill then there is there is when you, yeah, the hordes of xenomorphs. There's there's a lot of them. Uh, you can get you know outfits and accessories for your marine as well. So you can spice them up with glasses, caps, helmets, beadies, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Now you get seven types of classes for your character as well. So you've got a gunner, demolisher, technician, doc, phalanx, lancer, and recon. I don't know all the differences, but there you go. They have differences. Um, but each one you get various abilities as well. So my brother and I both went with Demolisher, but that's because it gives you like a cool shoulder-mounted rocket launcher. That's pretty good. Weapons. Weapons. Big weapons. You can get big weapons in this because it's aliens, isn't it? But the in-game credit to weapon price ratio is a bit stingy, I'm going to say. So you won't be able to buy many weapons, to be quite honest. So I stuck with two main ones. So I, st- I stuck with the original Pulse Rifle. That's the basic Ooh, thing. Classic. Yeah, classic. You know, saving money. And for nostalgia reasons, it's got the, the cool sound from the films in. So got to keep that. I did put a pur- uh, purple coat on it, though. <laughs> um, and then I, I got I also bought the Vulcan Flamethrower. Because that sounds cool. Flamethrower, aren't you? That was cool. So if all else fails, blaze everything up. Uh, but you can also get things like, you know, sentry guns, things like that, mines. So, like, certain parts in the uh, certain parts of the mission, you'll have to, like, trigger something. And this will lead to a switch- situation where you have to, like, defend an area. And beforehand, you have to, like, lay down sentry guns and mines to help you and that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, you've got various enemy types. I think, I, think there's, I think there's about 20 overall enemy types, I think. Something like that. It's quite a lot. Wow. But most common are probably the runners. So they're, like, your, ba- your basic see them off and they come in hordes at you but they're like mm. cannon fodder you'll be able to kill them quite easy of course you've got the face hookers they're just the really pesky sods that crawl along the floor and then leap at you and then you've got to do like a um, a quick time event to smack them away and they got prowlers these are annoying because they hide and lie in wait for you to pass them and then they'll just jump on you like Ooh. Oh. yeah oh very nice yeah and then you got warriors and these these big dudes big heavy dudes and they'll come and grab you and 
lift you up in the air, and then if you don't, another quick time event, they can kill you instantly. Um, and then you've got spitters. So as you might have guessed, they basically just sit at a distance and gob at it at you. Well, uh, lovely. Uh, yeah. I quite like the music. The music's, uh, I found out it's composed by Austin Winter, who's done uh, other games, The Art Journey. So hmm. Quite like it. It's, it's, it seems to have um, evoked the memory of the films in, in his score. Now, as I say, we've been playing this, me and my brother have been playing this on and off for a few months. And last week we got to the final mission. Okay, so we're fighting our way through this final mission and all that. And we're charging our way through. And we got to this big open area. And we're like, yeah, this is going to be the last stand, isn't it? And uh, so I set all my sentry guns on four sides. It's like a big open area. It's like a circular area. And there were like four pathways. So it's like, well, anyways, they're going to come from all sides, aren't they? Yeah. So I'll, I'll stick sentry guns on each one. And then threw some mines down. And we're about to push the button that would trigger the event. And then my internet suddenly conked out and booted him from the game. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. So it just replaced him with an AI. I'm like, oh, great. Uh, so, yeah. So we just decided to give it a, a miss for the rest of that night. We couldn't go through that again. Went back a few days later and completed it. It's a very surface level game. I mean, it's the plot is very uh, little importance, I have to say. I didn't follow the plot at all. But it's just one of those things where you can get a couple of mates, have a few drinks, have a laugh, blasting your way through these aliens. I've always said this about the film Alien and the film Aliens, is that one is one of the best horror films ever made and one is the best action films ever made. So if if you want your horror thing, go play Alien Isolation. If you want your action stuff, go play Five Teams Elite. It's actually, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not, it's not great, but it's not bad. I think together we could have a bit of a good laugh with it. You could probably pick it up for dirt cheap now, anyway. Yeah, I've just been looking. I think you could pick it up for about 17 quid or something. It's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. it's not bad at all. But that's what I've been playing. Go back. What have you played? What have I played? Um, so, really not a whole, whole lot over so the last kind of, uh, two weeks. Um, I'm not going to mention Borderlands 3, because um, I've just, like not done too much into it at all so i'll have to give that one a miss this time around um so continuing on from last time been playing more judgment uh so i've finally gone through um a couple of chapters in this one so the first the first chapter seemed like it went on for ages i don't know i don't know why um i feel like it's probably one of the longest chapters i've played in like Yakuza franchise, so, um, but gone through, um, and I've helped this Tojo clan captain get cleared of a, of a murder that happened, um, a murder case that you work on throughout all of sort of chapter one. So I helped him through that, and then uh, chapter two has been all pretty much about uh, Yagami still gets like an inkling of like, okay, well I've cleared this guy, but. Clearly, there's still like a murder on the loose, so I need to find out like what's going on there, really. Um, and he's got suspicions that the Tojo clan captain still has some sort of hand in it, like maybe he's been helping the the murderer. Um, and he's been given this guy um, the nickname the Mole, um, mainly because these murders seem to end up with um, the rival Yakuza clans guy's um, eyes getting ripped out basically oh, not lovely. Ri- I won't say ripped out they seem to be stabbed through I should say um, with like a some sort of ice pick thing so he's going through trying to investigate kind of like what happened to like the two previous um, murders that happened there that seems to link in and this captain is basically like what do you think you're doing? Like, why are you looking into it? There's no need anymore. And, like, the more you look into it, the more the captains, like, starts sending uh, friendly hints to kind of stop it, basically. Which just ends up with uh, Yagami essentially getting, like, being up by um, by the Tojo clan's, like, little minions uh, that's <laughs> running around uh, for the captain. So, uh, at the moment, just kind of... Um, 
going through the story a little bit more, sort of seeing what's going on. Um, at one point, Yagami gets sort of his, uh, his butt handed to him and looks like he's about to get murdered, but then gets saved by this random, uh, I don't know how best to describe him. There's like a, a thief clan going around um, that like to do parkour around the sea. And this guy who's got like a, um, do you like the anonymous mask? Yeah. He's kind of got one of those, but like rather than like the mustache, he's kind of got like a beard thing going on. Um, he gets saved by this by this guy really randomly because he helps him. Uh, Yagami kind of helps him escape the police early. Not voluntarily, um, but it helps. And uh, this guy just comes in, kind of kicks a couple of the plans butts, and then you kind of do like a, a run chase sequence where you're trying to run away from the Tojo clan. So yeah, it kind of helps him. You kind of wonder, oh, okay, why? And he basically didn't say anything, so he keeps it a bit mysterious. Um, and then I've gone into like the third chapter on that one. So I'm just doing a little bit more there. Um, playing a few more sort of the mini games and stuff. Managed to unlock the drone racing nice. so that that's nice. that's quite fun um so you basically get like your typical drone machine um uh, you do some races around um camarocho there's some like specific um lanes that are made for it um so you go through you have to race like i think six or eight i say six or eight five or seven other drones as well to um so are you actually the controlling the drone yourself yeah, so you dr- you yeah. drive the drone. Um, so you've got like a boost function as well. So that builds up over time. Then you can boost. There's also boost gates as well and um, heal gates as well because you can like bump into other drones and like damage your drone and stuff. Um, and then that's also unlocked getting um, materials around Camarocho as well. So there's like little flashing icons that have appeared in like certain parts of the city that you can walk over you can get like um, materials for it so you can, like screws wires um, plastics that kind of stuff and you can use that on the uh, I think it's called the Millennium Tower I think it is the bottom floor of it is where all like the drone racing stuff is so you can speak to a guy you can upgrade parts and stuff so that's that's pretty cool. Been enjoying my time with that one. Um, I've also been unlocking some of the side cases as well. So in this one, in Judgment, uh, you can make friends with um, certain people around the city. A lot of it seems to be in shops, so or like restaurants as well. So when you like buy a meal or you buy something from the shop, you start um, making a friendship with maybe the clerk or like a chef or something. And then certain things you do around the city as well can sort of help boost that friendship up. And like the more you boost that up, you'll start looking like side quests or not side quests, side cases they call them, in there. Um, I did bump into one, uh, Random War, which seems like the first one you ever do in the game. And it is like the most bonkers things, thing that you would do as you would expect in like a Yakuza game. So like, if I describe it, like, you're just walking around the street and then you find this, like, random wig that's on the floor that suddenly, like, flies away from you. So you're like, oh, okay, that's a bit random. Um, so you kind of, like, walk walk on to, like, where it went. And you find it, like, on the floor again. And this, like, random... Oh, I don't want to say random. Like, this bald guy essentially runs and kind of bumps into you. And there's, like... Like, apologizes stuff. It kind of looks like cosplay elvis presley um but bold um <laughs> sounds very yakuza pretty yakuza um and then uh like the wig like flies off again and he asks you to get his hat back don't know why he's called it a hat but okay um and then you go into this like chase sequence basically where you're like you're chasing down this wig that's like flying around the city and, like by this random wind that's pushing it around um in specific places, <laughs> so you're like chasing after this wig, you get it, and then um, this guy like bangs you for it. He takes you down like this side alley because he doesn't want like people to see him when he puts it on. Strangely, this and is like, getting shaped. This is yeah, and then like when he takes you down, then he puts it on. And he starts putting on this like 
act then suddenly like he gets like quite flirtatious with um yagami like what the hell and he turns out to be like this male hostess that's like famous on tv or something but yagami's like doesn't know him at all um which is a bit like okay then so like he gives you money for for getting his wig for him and then he buggers off and i mean that's like that's like peak yakuza side quests <laughs> like random the most random stuff that happens um like absolutely bat poo crazy um which is always like in conflict with like the main story like the side quests are like the most bonkers things and then, like, the main story is, like, the most emotional, dramatic, yeah. like, pull your heartstrings story that you could find. It's just like, why playing two different games here? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> but, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, just, just continue with that, really. I guess play a bit more, see where the story goes. See what happens. Um, now, the only other... I want to say thing that I've played, I suppose games I've played has been um, a collection of, I suppose uh, best to describe them as indie games but um, Mark will know them quite well because he, he plays quite a few of them um, so I've, I've bought a couple of the um, oh, I forgot what the developers called, it's the set of the like story games or it ends in like the game will end in like oh, story Kyrosoft. or something Kyrosoft. yeah that's the one um so like I've, I've bought quite a few of them because like I've, I've been enjoying like if i get to a point where, like I've, I've had enough of a little bit of judgment and i don't know what else to play i'll like come to these as like little time wasters i i, I quite enjoy them they, they are quite they fun good, aren't like they? just as just to waste a couple hours into yeah. um so the few that i've got i've been playing i've been playing game dev story classic so that's the one where you just you play as like a game dev. You make games. You choose like what what themes you want, what style of game you want, um, what to call it, and then you like hire different people for like different positions as well. So like someone could be pretty good at um, programming, another one could be good at graphics, another one could be good at like scenarios, and then another one's good at sound. Um, and then you just like you make a game, you throw it out into the wild, see how well it does. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's terrible. Um, and then you just like you make money, you just start building from there. You know, you can um, upgrade your studio, so you can go from like a uh, four man place to like a six man one, so you can hire more people to like obviously add more to the game. And like the higher the numbers are to each section, like the better all doing like that specific thing. Um, well, I've always been intrigued. Like, the last thing you can set is like whether you want to make it um, simplistic, um, accessible, realistic, books on fun or stuff like that. I've always been like, not quite sure why she's doing those aspects. Um, I suppose it depends on like, I suppose what theme you've picked and stuff or like, what, how you want to do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy that one. I think it's a, it's, it's a good good one. I think it was like one of the first ones they did. Um, it might have been the first one. Quite it could sure. have been. It certainly was a little, one early one, yeah. Yeah, um, and then you'll see like um, you can like develop for like PC or you can develop for like other like console brands where you have to like buy the license for and like hmm. they're always like a, a mock up of like the actual um, company and like the console as well. So like I think Nintendo here is known as like Inter Endo or something like that. <laughs> it's a bit like it's a bit weird, and then like. Gotta avoid that what, Nintendo what, litigation. Yeah, I forgot what Sega's called in it. Another random name. So, um, yeah, I enjoy that one. Um, another one that I play is called The Manga Works. Ooh, so, don't, don't know that one. Yeah, so, so this is where you play as a, a, a for, for lack of a better term, an artist, in effect. And you can essentially create um, manga stories and stuff that you can then get published and um you can either then um so you, you'll publish like certain publishers sometimes they'll last like for you to then create like a full arc out of it as well so like you'll initially start with like short stories and if if they like like a certain one they'll like, actually like basically like, developed into like a full one manga basically 
that's that's quite fun. It's it's probably a little bit more basic than game dev because at the moment um, I don't think I can get to a point where I can move from a like one bedroom to house thing <laughs> um, to like get like a proper studio, but I've not quite got the um, finances for it yet. So I'm still I'm just working on uh, making a series at the moment for this publisher. And then the only other one that I've played that I've probably played the most out of is Tennis Club Story. Yeah. Um, so, as you probably expect, this is one where you um, you create a, a tennis player, pretty basic. You'll train him up. Um, I think you also get another person that joins in as well. And then you make, like, an academy out of this. So... You, you help, like, train, like, the local people. They'll come in, enjoy, like, you can train them up and stuff, and they'll give you, like, um, items and stuff that helps add um, attributes to your player. And then you play, like, rival um, academies and stuff. So um, you can play against them, beat them, um, get equipment and stuff. You can get sponsors, which will unlock better equipment as well. Um, and then you go into, like, a, a tournament, to increase your rank and if you win it you can then like go to the um it's like the club president or something like that and you'll like you'll agree to like upgrade your rank basically and then you unlock more rival schools you go up against and, and that kind of stuff and you can lock more courts as well to do training for like all the locals and stuff it's quite fun actually i've been enjoying that one quite a lot um Again, just like really simple. Just you can waste like an easy like hour or two on it. Just it just seems to fly by while you're just doing it. Um, I've played another one, but I've not played too much of it. There's the Pocket League one. Pocket League story. Oh, um, so addicted to that. I could spend yeah. hours on that. Yeah. So like you create your football team and then yeah. basically you go like that stuff. Um, I did make like the Joke and Dolphin team initially, and we've played a couple of games, won them, um, like trained some of the players up, got a couple of players in, but I've not touched it too much. Um, but I do like it. Uh, it's probably one that I'd like to sink my teeth into a little bit more. Um, but there's there's so many. Like I was looking on yeah. the store the the other day. There's just absolutely so many. Like there's there's some that I want to get. Like I think I think I've bought another one which is called the Anime Story. Um, which is quite similar to the manga one, but you just make like an anime instead. Yeah. Um, but there's others that would be interesting, like there's the Grand Prix one. Yeah, I want to play uh, that one. I've got it. I've got it. I need to play that. One. Mega Mall was, story. Uh, the Mega Mall. I think that was one you spoke about um, yeah. a couple of years ago about playing that one. Uh, cruise, like, ship. cruise ship. Cruise ship. Yep. Yeah, cruise ship. Yeah. Um, there's like town ones um, yeah. as well. There's, um, there's like a sushi restaurant one as well. Sushi restaurant, yeah, there's that one. Uh, is there a horse racing one? Yeah, quite, there's I'm like quite stable. Sure. I'm just looking through now, there's absolutely tons. This yeah, there's lots of arcade also. story. There's, yeah, there's an arcade one, um, you make your own arcade. Um, tropical resort. Yeah. Tropical cool. resorts, yeah. yeah. There's so many, and they're about £10, but like you frequently find them on sale for about a five, they'll come like half, half price. Like, the ones that I like, I like or I want to get, I'll just put my wish list and I'll wait until like they come on sale and then just like buy them. Yeah. So, but there's so many. It's like there's there's like a ninja one as well. I don't know what that one's about. Um, Ninjas. <laughs> clearly. Um, but yeah, there's so many. But I think they they start on mobile as well. I think there's there's a few of them on mobile they can get for free. I don't think you actually have to buy them. Potentially. Uh, I I I had to buy Pocket League Store. You have to buy Pocket League Store. I, I could be wrong. I, I, it was I've, only I have bought a couple of them on my mobile. I think I've got the game dev one. But they are worth it. Oh, yeah. Just, even on the go, there's like a time yeah. waster. There's, they're just. Because they're not games that nickel and dime you. It's just buy the game. That's no, it. once you buy them, that's it. You don't have to, like, you don't, there's no microtransactions or anything. Yeah. So, um, no, I just really enjoy playing them. Uh, I think there's no one as well. They've. I think they've got one where they've actually made a sequel to it. It's like the only one that's actually got a sequel. And it's like Dungeon Story or something like that. Mega Ball's got a sequel. Has Mega Ball got a sequel as yeah. well? I don't know. I don't know why, but it has. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's so many. It's ridiculous, but they're good. They're good fun. Just just waste yeah. like an hour or two. Just sink it in if you've got nothing bad to do. Yeah. 
I've lost way more than an hour or two. It's like, Probably, it's, like yeah. it's like I'll, I'll put it on. It's like, oh, I'll have an hour before I go to bed. And then before I know it, it's two a.m. <laughs> it's just <laughs> still, still. It's like, oh, just one more match. I'm pocket league story. It's like football it's, manager yeah, that, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like it's always one more yeah. game. The, Oh, this I'll just my, do this training yeah. session. This is my football manager. I could never get into football manager. So this is scr- oh, this, uh, this that itch. Yeah. No, they're, they're all good fun. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll probably be still playing them by the time the next pod comes out. So. <laughs> but there was one other thing that I have remembered that I think we all have played. Yes. Mm-hmm. That we've finally yeah. gone into. We've finally made, broke the, uh, made the FIFA decision. curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're finally, right we've had enough beef we need to give a break yeah we got that annoyed with ourselves that we decided to play another game i'm still shocked yeah. that we even did it yes it didn't feel right <laughs> yeah we That's all right. played we Fortnite. no i'm joking no. oh God. right pot of it no we played payday 2 mm. that game from that's 10 years old now <laughs> believe it or not good fun though I'm enjoying it. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Know, basically, you go around doing heists. That's pretty much it. I don't know pretty how, but it, I, yeah. I I was ranked 33 or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember playing it that much to get the high ranks beforehand. Because you're a veteran, Mark. That's why. Yeah, it would appear so. That's it, yeah. It would um, appear so. Because we yeah, bought this so ages ago. We did. We bought it ages ago on my recommendation. It. And then... <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think we uh, we got ourselves kitted out, and um, you were both John John Wick. That's another thing. I have so, no idea how I was John Wick because I didn't select John Wick. Me I just neither. came on the game, and he was just John Wick. <laughs> I think you can put it on random and, let, and until you just select it, it will give like a random person. Um, but anyway, we did our first heist. Um, I think it was a simple jewelry store. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, yes. I enjoyed smashing all the cabinets and taking all the jewellery and watches. It were good. Yeah. Uh, so I think we 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 started on normal difficulty. I think first, and I, th- I think it was a it was a bit of a breeze. I think it was. I yeah. Don't think we ran into yeah. too much trouble. So we thought, all right, we'll 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 put on like the difficulty high. See see if we can get a bit of a challenge. I forgot what was the heist on this one. Um, we had to empty them this, vans, didn't we? No, it was the, the bank, two-parter. wasn't it? Sorry, it was the was bank, the wasn't it? One? Yeah, it was a two-part one. So it was like it was a small kind of like um, American bank. Um, we all voted to put like the thermal drill a bit close to the wall that was at the vault. Pick that up. Um, I think we wanted to, we were going to like scour it first, and I think maybe I probably. <laughs> Someone put the mask on back. That's been a yeah. stealth. Didn't go very. No, well, that was it. We were, were going to do a stealth. Um, and I think I went around the back, and I wanted to take out. There was like a. It might be like the bank manager kept on sort of coming in and out. I wanted to sort of take him out because I think he might have like a, a key that would help us. That didn't go well. I think the guard saw me do it. So, <laughs> so we just saw um, red. Because I was like, I was, yeah, I was trying to like, I was trying to see if I could like get my weapon out without putting a mask on, and you can't. Like there's no way of doing it, so I was like, right, we're going to go a mask on, and, like pistol whip this <laughs> this manager, and that didn't go well. So I alerted everyone. So um, we got the drill going, and we were like defending it for a while. Nathan yeah. liked his. Uh, it kept running outside. His blood sprees. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, I'm, outside, I'm killing, I'm gonna take this opportunity to apologise for all the times I'm been downed and that you've got me back up again so <laughs> yeah, sorry down and thank you you were down outside, you're down the, outside the bank yeah. <laughs> like, i had to keep reaching through the window to help you up <laughs> <laughs> i know i fallen over again um yeah <laughs> so i get you through the window so like it initially starts off with like the the bank guards try and try and have a go at you and that was a bit easy so then uh the difficulty starts ramping up police come in basic uniforms kind of take them out and it starts getting a little bit more difficult. Start coming in with riot gear, and then there's the riot gear with the shields, and then there's the bloody Ooh, taser guys. Oh, the tasers! The tasers, absolutely annoying. Because oh, nice. if they hit you, you just start spraying randomly. You can't oh, yeah. hit anything. And then you have got the snipers on the roofs as well, which are a bit of a pain if you if you're not keeping on them. Yeah. So I think we we got the bank open. I think by this point, Nathan actually got put into custody because he went down so oh, many yeah. times. Yeah. So it's yeah. like me and Mark trying to like rob this. The vault trying to open some of the 
um, the spells the, mini bolt locks, yeah. lock things, but they were technically cash, cash, cash boxes. Is that like what safety it? deposit yeah. boxes. That's it. Yeah. 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 They so were like yeah. I think we did a few, and they were like, actually, we're just gonna get the money. Yeah, because there was just the hundreds <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think we can do all uh, this. So we got so we got through, run out, go on the van, and then go into a second part where we have to essentially like the van crashes at some point and you have to wait for like a basically like a backup van to come. And that that was a bit of a nightmare because it's essentially like a <laughs> it's basically like a hold mode where you have to like defend somewhere from all sides. Yeah. Um I think it's at some point like I think uh you uh, Mark and Nathan got points custody and like I'm on my own trying to like yeah, it's just just hide the time, time until it's like back. yeah, waste time while like the police are like taking the bloody bags as well, running off with them. Like, what are you doing? She corruption. That that corruption. Yeah. yeah, what's going on there? <laughs> um, but we managed to get through and got some decent money out of it. Um, and then probably our most difficult one that we went through is the nightclub. Oh yeah. Last- How many times did we try that? About four or five times. Something uh, like I think Maybe it was three. Just twice. No, it was just twice. I thought it was, it was twice. a second. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think we we failed it once. We all got yeah, points. Custody. I just got murdered on the dance floor. <laughs> Quite literally. Murdered on the dance uh, floor. Yeah. And, um, so Felix Baxter. Yeah. Yep. So you could stealth it, but I don't think we really found a good way about it. to stealth. Because <laughs> like mm. you have to like you can get through initially. There's like a bouncer, and you can. If you wait yeah, for a bit, there's like gangsters yeah, in there. Yeah, you have to avoid these on... mafiosos, don't you? Yeah. yeah, you have to like speed past them so they didn't notice you. Um, but like the back rooms, it was difficult. Like I tried speeding past them, we were like, "What are you doing here?" Like, ah, yeah. oh, sh- well. <laughs> oh, and the <laughs> shield people now. when they eventually come, they are so annoying. Yeah, because there's a point where they're getting to like a back a back area, but it's like the clubs all like quite closed area yeah. space. So yeah. it's pretty difficult to like get around them. So, like, so it's like Benny back. Hill, you're running around these tables in the center of the room, <laughs> yeah. trying to get around back around. Um And then like when you drill in the man, like the managers, uh, safe as well. Like they come in through like bloody night lights. Oh, yeah, so like oh, for yeah. God's sake. Yeah, there's one where we're looking through the window down onto the dance floor, yeah. and then a, a four SWATs just came through the windows behind us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were just like turning around. Oh, what's going on here? Um. So yeah, it took us two tries, but we we eventually did it. So, but no, I think it's really good fun. Like once you get there, I I think I don't know if we'll do it for the future, but I think keeping like the AI partner, I think is might be an idea because so he can come and help and like get the person up who's downed if he's near them. I think so. Yeah, basically it's, it's another target for the police, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way I see it. Yeah, can you shoot him instead, <laughs> yeah. even though he's not going to kill any one of you, but. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think the game is definitely more enjoyable co-op than being on your yeah, own, like three other yeah. AI people. Because like when I, I I tried playing it, it's like I'm not the only one who's like pulling the money around. So I've got to like get the money, go to the van, put the money in, come back, get some more money, go to the van. Yeah, yeah. just gets a bit. I'm boring. like, why are you guys lazy? <laughs> I mean, great, you're being bullet sponges for me. You are kind of sort of killing the police for me. But like, this is Tekken Pro. So, um, at least we could coordinate our efforts mm, as best as we can. Yeah. Hey, hey, I think it's been a resounding success. I think we've done rather well. So far, I, I, I thought, I thought we were going to do absolutely terribly at it. <laughs> to be quite honest. Well, well Nathan does like to run out into the open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I get down all he's, the time. He's, play, he's do... playing like it's called Dewey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Lone Wolf and everyone. I'm doing it to protect we'll you see. guys. I think... I'm the. I'm the I'm the bullet sponge. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're the bullet you're the sponge. Human shield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I would definitely play play some more. I think um, we'll play a couple more on the on the hard difficulty, and then I think once we start getting a bit comfortable, we'll Extreme. ramp it up and see. Yeah. Because you you do get more money out of the out of the jobs as well. The harder it is, the more money is like the risk basically. So. Yeah. We'll definitely have to try try different ones as well. Cause I think I think actually the last. No, the one we did before the nightclub one was like probably our longest one. That like whole dock. Oh, the warehouse one where thing. we had to get yeah. the oh, yes. oh <laughs> we yeah. Oh yeah. Like open that. the safes and then we had to get the bu- we had to get like the bags onto the um forklifts. We had to dry the forklifts out. Yeah. I read um, when we were gonna get blown up because I'm sure I shot the nukes about six times. I'm sure that I'm sure that all the cops are shooting them as well. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I've got wards. <laughs> 
They're going to go off Madness. at any moment. What are you doing? Some uh, people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, literally. No, good fun. Really enjoyed it. I'd love to see if we can find more of these type of games. Like, I loved, like... Payday 3. Like, <laughs> Payday yeah. 3, I suppose. Um, I, I don't think we can. I wish I wish you could have done, like... 21st of September. Dead. 21st of September. Oh, is Stacked. it? Ooh, that's, that's, yeah. What? Stacked. Maybe see if we can convince Mark to get back for blood and give that go, maybe. I might look into it. Well, pleasure as always, chaps. Thank you very much. So if you enjoyed listening to us, please consider tuning in next time. We release bi-weekly on Tuesdays. You can visit our website at jokingdolphin.com. Also, feel free to follow us on all social media platforms to continue the conversation. You can find Joking Dolphin on YouTube and Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, slash X, at Joking Dolphin. Until next time, thanks for listening. Goodbye. Toodle pip. The pleasure is all mine, Mark. Goodbye. That killed you saying X, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>